Okay, here we go. This is part four, uh, body mechanics and how it kind of connects with the osteoporosis. So you want to pull up the osteoporosis exercises and positioning as you're for the latter part of this as you're working your way through it. Body mechanics, um, I think a lot of us already know a lot about body mechanics. Oops, see if I can move this thing around a little bit. Shoot, okay, won't let me do it. Okay, so sweeping, keeping things close to your body versus far away, obviously bending his back. Pushing, you're always pushing from behind versus pulling. Think of carts and stuff, we'll get into that. Lifting, um, planning your lift, asking for help. Wide base is a key thing. And I'm gonna do some lifting on the practicum. Practicum slash midterm, you'll have to watch me lift something up and decide, you know, what am I doing wrong? One of the things people classically do, do, long, do wrong is they don't have that wide base. You need a wide base, um, keeping that load close, close to your legs, lifting with your legs. Um, that's kind of lifting basics. Here's a good one. She's going down on one knee. She's avoiding the bending over at the back. She's bending at the hips more. Um, I'll work on that as well keeping that low close as she goes up and she keeps her back straight the whole way, which is, which is key. Um, bending, this is for um, body mechanics for snow shoveling. We're gonna actually practice this in the lab. This is a big thing in Maine, snow shoveling. Um, wrong way on the left, right way on the right. Um, see how his back it has got the big C there, the big curve we don't want. No hip flexion. A lot of people have a hard time flexing at the hip. They're just too stiff. They're not used to doing that. Um, there's uh, a Williamson exercise to work on that hip flexion. Here, the opposite. He's got great hip flexion. Keeps his back straight. Wide base. Um, he's kind of locking his knees a little bit. He's bending his knees. Really using his quad muscles versus his back muscles. Um, they say bracing your core for each lift. I'm not sure what that means, but definitely keeping your back straight, um, bending at the hip, wide base, bending your legs. There's some other stuff with lifting, the getting into these straps. That's a bigger thing for men who do a lot of, men and women who do a lot of lifting in their jobs during the day. It just brings the load from the upper back to the uh, the legs, you know, where there's more strength kind of stuff. You kind of feel better to do that. This is a key thing. You may be a little bit familiar with it. You want to be very familiar with it because we're going to be doing a lot with this as once we start breaking down jobs. Um, where is the power zone? Power zone is where you want to be when you're doing a task, when you're working or whatever. Danger zone is where you don't want to be. So you see this guy here, he's working right in this power zone. He's doing a task right here. He's reaching up here, it's danger zone. Anything above shoulder height is really hard on the shoulders, as we've talked about in upper extremity, because um, the shoulder joint is so vulnerable, can lead to all kinds of problems over the long term. Same thing with reaching down here. Anything down low is is bad news um, for the body. So we, so we want to be in the middle, don't want to be down too low, don't want to be, down, don't want to be too high. Here's another one that kind of hits this one. This is easy, so you're working close to his body, awkward, and definitely avoid. A um, couple of terms, anthrop anthropometry, dimensions of the human body, anthropometrics, the science which deals with the measurement of measurement dash data around dimensions of the body. Um, to kind of give an example of what they mean by the anthrop anthropometry, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, dimensions of the human body. Um, the chairs, probably the chair you're sitting in right now, they're kind of designed, most of them are static, they're not adjustable. So they're designed for the average sized human being. You know, what is the average sized human being? So basically, uh, if you're average sized, you're kind of set up ergonomically to work at a particular site or sit in a particular chair or use a particular desk. If you're not, 
if you're real tall, if you're real short, uh, maybe if you're a little bit uh, larger in some way, um, you're kind of out of luck and you're put into these awkward postures. So ergonomics, anthropometric, making things more adjustable, so you're kind of working in the power zone versus these danger zones. I think you're familiar with this, just to kind of uh, go over it, keeping your wrists in neutral. Keeping your wrists in neutral is very important for all tasks. If you tend to be doing a task all day long where your wrists are excessively flexed or extended or deviated in either direction, you're going to run into problems. Um, maybe if you analyze how you're, if you're at your laptop, how are your wrists at your laptop? I'm guessing that they're not in a good position or your neck is not in a good position because the laptop is not adjustable. It's fixed. You know, the, it's just a tight little thing. Um, so either you're bending way down with your neck, or if you prop the laptop up, you know, you have, uh, uh, you can get your neck in neutral, but then your wrists are kind of cocked way up, extended way up, or flexed. So it's just kind of bad news, unless you have that detachable, uh, adjustable screen. Okay, now we're kind of shifting. This is similar, um, but a different kind of topic, osteoporosis. You'll see tons of clients with osteoporosis. It just kind of goes with the territory. A lot of females, especially once they get over a certain age. And with osteoporosis, um, you have to be just really almost obsessive around body mechanics and body positioning because those bones are just so weak and brittle. Um, even mild stress is like it says, like bending over or lifting a vacuum cleaner can cause compression fractures. Have you ever seen clients with compression fractures? They can be very, very painful and they're just so, so common. Just sitting hot, too hard down on the toilet and can cause them sitting poorly in a chair, lifting body mechanics. So really take this stuff to heart when you're dealing with clients with osteoporosis. You can spend a whole session just working on the body mechanics with the osteoporosis clients and positioning in the chairs, positioning in the wheelchairs is very, very important for them. Um, this some, some simple things. Uh, obviously this is not good here, neither is this. Talks about good sitting and bad sitting. Bending over, like if they're doing ADLs with their feet, kind of think about that. Um, and then if we go to the osteoporosis exercises and positioning, a lot of the stuff is from Sarah Meeks. Uh, Sarah, S-A-R-A, and then Meeks, M-E-E-E, two E's, K-S. She's a physical therapist. She's kind of like the leading guru on osteoporosis. She does a lot of workshops and clinics around the country. If you're interested in this, this is definitely, she's a good person to go and see around this. A lot of it's uh, positioning, like we said, and a lot of it's posture stuff that we've already talked about. Only the difference with this, uh, working on this posture stuff, is these clients are a lot more frail, a lot more vulnerable, and it kind of fits with a lot of our, our frail elder, elderly clients. And we can work on posture with them, with a lot of them. We know, um, we do that test, I think I talked about it earlier, is it fixed or is it something that still has potential? Um, is it still, you know, flexible, fixed versus flexible kind of thing? And the way to tell that is, can you pull them back into neutral or close to neutral? If you can't, uh, you know, passively, you could try that. If you can't, then you know it's kind of a lost cause. But if you can, you, you, it's still possible to improve their posture, which improves their positioning, their lung capacity, all these great things, preserves their osteoporosis, avoids the compression fractures. So it's a good thing to invest time in to check out with just about all of your elderly clients, really. And these are some exercises. I won't go into too depth, but these, this, you can do in bed a lot of these. It's a shoulder press one to get your shoulders back. Um, head press, uh, elbow press. This is, again, these are good for forward shoulders. If you have forward shoulders, you could do these every morning before you get up. It's a good thing to do, nice and easy. Um, Chest lift, that's a good one. Just kind of strengthen your back muscles, not so much the posture. Um, the bridges are good to do for our elderly clients. Belly strengthening, get those uh, rectus abs going. It's a good exercise for that. That's easy to do. Uh, just angels in the snow for range of motion. Uh, this morning stretches. These are all good routine ones for our elderly clients. And then from here on, um, these are sheets that are just uh, tips on positioning when you're doing all these different tasks around osteoporosis. So you have a client that has osteoporosis, you have them in the hospital, outpatient clinic, home health. You can go through their routine, what they do on a daily basis, 
and using these charts as a guide and as a handout, um, you can say, you know, you should be positioning yourself like this and that. Just a lot of great education for them. It goes through all these different tasks. I won't go through all of it, but it's, again, like a lot of the stuff in this, these two classes that I'm teaching, great resource. Keep it someplace that you can access it, a Google Doc or something. So you have that osteoporosis client, they have back pain, they've had compression fracture, history of compression fractures, or had some compression fractures, they're in a lot of pain, go to this stuff. It, it could help you out, um, give you stuff to do with your, your client visits and stuff. Um, again, a great resource. Okay, so I could try to wrap it up with this.